Welcome back. I'm back with another wrestling video and I'm doing All Elite Wrestling Episode 2 review. I did not review the debut episode because I didn't really watch it live. I watched it like days later. But I just want to review the wrestling show. I thought the first show was really good. I think I reviewed like a couple of their pay-per-views, like maybe All In or All Out or Double or nothing, something. I don't know. I review. I know I reviewed something about AEW on this channel, so go back and watch that video. If you're watching this video, you obviously love wrestling, so you should check out my Watch Wrestling With Me videos where I just watch video. I just watch a wrestling match that usually I want it to be put in a viewer request, but right now... I'm um, still gaining that little crowd for my wrestling videos because this channel is not really known for wrestling. So, if you're watching this, you should go watch those. I got four volumes out right now. I've watched matches from TNA, Ring of Honor, and I think an indie show. I'm not sure. But you should check those out. I even watched, I think it was Ring of Honor. I watched uh, Adam Cole and Dawn Gasol. So, y'all should definitely check out the Watch Wrestling With Me videos. I really want that to take off because I want to keep doing Watch Wrestling With Me's. But... Going into All Elite Wrestling, when I got to it, because I didn't really know what channel it was on. I knew it was on TNT, but I didn't know what channel it was on on my TV. But I eventually found it. I think I was like three minutes in. And it was in the middle of the Young Bucks Private Party entrance video or video package. Hyping up the match, uh, I thought it was really good. I like, I took some key points I took from it was, one, from Private Party, they said they were probably the least known people inside the part inside the tournament which i agree with private party i've never like i did not even know what they look like until i saw this video package so they were definitely true right about saying that they were like the underdogs for real because they're the least known young bucks uh i always thought they were good on the mic but until one of them said like one thing that just really stood out to me he said uh in my opinion we've been the best tag team for five we're the best tag team now we've been the best for about five maybe ten years um and uh, we're not giving that up. And we're not giving it up easy. You just said you weren't giving it up. And now you're saying you're not giving it up easy. If you're saying you're not going to give it up easily, that means that you're willing to give it up. But it's going to be like a fight. It's going to be like a battle. What? That didn't make sense. That, and I, oof, I said something bad about the Young Bucks. Uh oh. But anyway, uh, so uh, Private Party had like a super long entrance. I noticed that. But inside the entrance, the, I, I do like how they... Uh, open the little rope like and they came out I think did they have drinks I'm not sure uh, but I saw in the crowd there was other members of the tag team tournament inside the crowd front row so I like that Isaiah Cassidy so I found out that was one of the guys they he was worked over for a long time by the heels and then he had a nice little super kick reversal by just whoop going back I was like oh I like that just like duck out the way well don't duck out the way just like whoop like, I, I really liked his uh, his offense or defense, I guess. One of the Young Bucks kit spit their gum in, at his, in his direction. I thought that was pretty gross. The other guy got the hot tag. I think his name is Mark Quinn. I'm not sure if I'm even saying that right. I just was taking it from what JR was saying, and it sounded like he was saying Quinn. He had a really good hot tag, and he did, like, a ton of dives back-to-back, -back, and they weren't suicide dives, which I think suicide dives... Like, it seemed like you go real fast and it take the win out of you. But he was doing, like, over-the-top rope flips and all this stuff. Like, he was... I liked him a lot. The second guy, Mark Quinn, I liked a lot. Like, he did a lot of stuff. I don't like what he was wearing, though. Like, he had, like, literally a tail. Like, not like a tail, like a animal tail, but like a tuxedo tail. And I wasn't a fan of that. Like, what... what I, don't, I don't really remember, like, if he had, like, what type of shirt it was. But I know he had, like, a jacket, a... Tuxedo tail on. I didn't really. I wasn't a fan of that. So then the Young Bucks worked over Mark for a while, and they did like a. They well, first of all, Matt did a power bomb on what was his name Cassidy Isaiah Cassidy on the ramp. So I thought it was about to be the finish at this point because like I felt like he was taken out and they were about to go in and finish uh, Mark. But they did like a slice bread. It's kind of weird for me how to describe this. It was like a sliced bread. From the top rope but it wasn't like doo -doo -doo, them running up the top rope like you know the normal slice bread it was like mark was on the top rope and he and matt did a slice bread hopefully y'all saw it and y'all followed that after they did that big suicide slice bread they did a sharpshooter but he ended up getting out of it then i heard uh over the thing because i was like because first JR said something like, oh my God, the Young Bucks haven't put them away yet. I'm like, dude, like, geez, like, 
insults a private party. I looked at my phone. It was like 817. I'm like, oh, Jesus Christ. Has this really been going on for this long? Because I don't even think it was a commercial break at that time. So I'm like, well, I guess I'm really into this and I'm liking this because when I watch, let me tell you, when I watch WWE, I never watch the screen. Like, it's on and I'm just do, 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 doing whatever I want on my phone, on my laptop. And then if I hear something, I'm listening to the commentary. If I hear something that sounds like, I'll look up. Like, I, I barely even see finishes because WWE is so boring right now. So the fact that I was actually into this match and stay into it and it was 17 minutes, I was like, okay, maybe this match should end now. Because as much as I was into it, it was like 17 minutes into the show. But then, over the loudspeaker, they said, this match has been going on for 10 minutes. And I'm like, oh, okay. So the video package and all that interest us with seven minutes. That makes perfect sense. Then they, JR had mentioned that if Young Bucks don't put them away soon, like he just assumed they was about to win. If he don't, they don't put them away soon, then this is over. Because they can't hit 20 minutes. So I'm like, oh, is that the thing in this tournament? You can't go past 20 minutes? I feel like 20 minutes is kind of light. Like, I feel like 25 should have been the minimum, maybe even, say, 30 minutes. But then it looked like the Young Bucks was about to finish this match. And then, like, Isaiah got back up. And it was, like, back and forth action between both teams. It was actually a really good match. It been a really good match in this day. Like, it was really good. I didn't know who was about to win. Well, I, I kind of just figured Young Bucks was going to win this whole time. Like, I never really I, – I never had – I even was about to write in my notes – Good match, but I never ever thought that Private Party were about to win. And then, literally, they won right before I wrote that. So, I think Young Bucks were about to go for the Melter Driver. So, Matt jumped on the top rope to do, or Nick was about to springboard, but the uh, one of the Private Parties pulled him down, and the other one just victory rolled him. But before that, they did do a Frankensteiner from the top rope and a Frog Splash or Shooting Star, and they called it like Gin and Juice. And I guess that was a finisher. And that was a false finish where I thought, like, oh, they're about to win. But they didn't. But really, it was, they did a victory row. I think it was a victory row. And they got the three count. And it was super surprising. Young Bucks lost in the first round. I don't know if I like that or agree with that. Like, Kenny Omega's sucking inside AEW because I think he haven't won a match yet. Young Bucks just lost in the first round. Like, Hangman Page lost to Chris Jericho inside the... And I don't know anything about Hangman Page, really. But he lost in the first round. Like, the only person that's doing good is Cody in the Elite. It's really, really weird. But I thought the match was really, really good. And I gave it three stars. I thought the match was a three-star match. Then, my favorite part of the show, honestly, Jericho comes out for a promo. I'm glad this didn't start the show. I'm glad this came right here. So he came out with LAX, Jake Hager, and Sammy Guevara. So they all came out, and Jericho cut a promo, and I was like, this faction does not look good. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, when I see Swagger, I just, I'm out. Like, I'm sorry. I'm not a fan. I cannot take him seriously. But Jericho, LAX, first of all, Jack Swagger and LAX, I know they named not LAX. Santana and Ortiz, they now call it LAX inside AEW, but still, I, I'm used to LAX. But... And I got one of them, a match with them on my Watch Wrestling With Me, so check that out. But anyway, Jericho, or LAX with Jake Swag, Jack, Jake Hager is weird because Jack, Jake Hager is a Trump supporter and is all about we the people and his character in WWE, but then he's next to two Latinos. Also, Sammy Guevara. I found out that he's Spanish as well. I didn't know that. And then also, Jericho is with Hager, who... Jack Swagger cashed in his money in the bank on Chris Jericho. I know this is wrestling, y'all, but that, I don't know. I just put this group. It's just really, really weird. I don't know. I don't know if I'm into it, y'all. But anyway, Big Hill faction, I guess. And Jericho called himself La Champion, which <laughs> when he said that, I cracked up. I thought it was funny. Uh, I don't know. Uh, he said that they name is going to be, what was it, actually? So he cut a really, really cocky promo. He buried the We The People chance. Yes. He said, like, the We The People sucks. It's buried. Don't say nothing. It was a dumb idea by dumb creative. Or a lazy idea by lazy creative. It was hilarious. I loved it. I could listen to Jericho shoot all day. He said, and that's a shoot. <laughs> so he puts over Jack. Well, he puts over each member. Then he got the swagger or hagger. And he talked about how he's undefeated in the MMA. And he's huge and all this stuff. Their team name is the Inner Circle. I don't know. 
I don't know how I feel about that. At first, I didn't like it, but then the inner circle, the inner circle. I don't know. I kind of like it. I mixed feelings. I'm leaning more towards like it. At first, when I heard it, I didn't like it. Uh, throughout the show, I ended up liking it. Uh, Jericho addresses the elite, and he <laughs> he comes a great promo. Jericho is great. He started talking about Cody's family and how he don't like da da da. He addressed Cody's challenge at full gear. He talked about. How he didn't like Dusty. He thought he was basically an asshole. He didn't like Dustin. He think he, he sucks. Like, I don't know. I don't remember what actually said. It was a great promo. Then we go to Jimmy Havoc, who I, I do want to see more of. I've heard of him a lot. He kind of reminds me a little bit of Jimmy Jacobs. Um, he, he does remind me a little bit of Jimmy Jacobs. I, saw, I, I like that I saw his video promo while he was entering because I didn't even know he had an accent. He reminds me like Jimmy Jacobs and Sammy Callahan mixed. I have never seen a match of Jimmy Havoc until I saw this. Uh, Darby Allen. <laughs> they showed his match with Cody. That was crazy. That was actually insane. The casket drop or whatever it was to the apron. Oh, my God. How did he not? That is dangerous. I don't think he should have did that. That's horrible. So, apparently, there was a shot at Jericho on the line next week. Whoever won got a title match. That was kind of random and out of nowhere. But... This match was just like a brawl, like Jimmy Havoc wrestles just like I assumed he would. But I will say, it seemed like it was more Havoc heavy. Like he just beat the crap out of Allen almost the entire match, including hitting a Falcon Arrow from the apron to the ringside. It looked painful as hell. Uh, but then, out of nowhere, and this is why I wasn't that big a fan of this match, like Havoc was beating the hell out of... Allen for so long, and then even through the commercial break, like he was beating him up before the commercial break, went through the commercial break, still beating him up, and after the commercial break, still beating him up. He Allen Darby Allen just out of nowhere, and Sammy K or I almost called him Sammy Cow. Jimmy Havoc did bite inside this match, but then Darby at the end of the match he bit Sammy Callahan's hand. And then he did a stunner. I forget how he did it. It's kind of like a sliced bread stunner, but not, I think. I forgot. And then he hit a coffin drop from the top rope. And like, Is that how he's supposed to hit it? Only his, well, that would make sense, actually. The top part, his upper body hit the body. Yeah, that wouldn't make sense if his, yeah. And he won. I was like, what? Like, uh, you mean to tell me Jimmy Havoc, had 98% of this match, I would say. 98%. And he just lost to two moves. Or three moves. I wasn't a fan. So I gave I gave this match 1.75 stars. I couldn't even give it two stars. Because it was just... I don't know. It's just... Jimmy Havoc was on top for so long. I just... I feel like Darby Allen didn't really do anything. He just won. And I know y'all like Darby Allen. And I do too. But he it, the match wasn't that great. So then we got Rio, who is the AEW Women's Champion, and Brit B Dr. Britt Baker versus B. Priestley, who I hear a lot about, and Emmy Sakura. I'm not sure how to say her name, y'all. So I found out that Rio was trained by Sakura, and they started the match, and they started hot. I love this. I'm a big fan of women's wrestling already when it's good. <laughs> And this was this was great. Th these two in the beginning, like I thought it was really really good. Then it went on. It just seemed like a regular tag match, but it was a good women's or not even just a good tag team match. The finish came kind of out of nowhere a little bit, where Britt Baker hit a ripcord elbow, which I really really like. Like she just went on a fury. She hit a ripcord elbow. Then she hit, and this is on Sakura, and she hit. And I found out that Sakura trained. Did I already say that part? Sakura trained Rio. I don't know if I said that already. I probably did. B. Priestley and Britt Baker have, like, tension. They don't like each other, so they're kind of like an arrival. But back to the Fury. Britt Baker hit a ripcord elbow, then a page turner type move. I don't know what to call it. It's like a Russian leg sweep, but it's like a pew. Like, it's not like a sweep with the, her arm on her shoulder. It's like she literally sweeps her. I love that move. I really like it when people do it really good. And then she hit, like, she locked her inside of, like, a Batista bite type move or, like, Neville's finisher. But she, um, she took her hand and, like, did a mandible call. Like, she touched the bottom. Like, something. It played off her being the dentist. I know that. Uh, and she won. And after the match, she had a lot of tension with, um, 
B. Priestley, and it got broken up by the champion, the champion. And then we go to a video package of, well, not a video package. It was literally a video of the best friends embracing. They literally just embraced. And then it panned over to them in the crowd. And I feel like the crowd did not care about that video. Like, they weren't laughing. They weren't smiling. The crowd was kind of dead after that video. Like, nothing happened. And it panned over to the best friends. And, of course, they made a little bit of noise. I like the best friends. I got them on my name, on my universe, and my um, my... I, I like I like best friends a lot. I watch their matches, and I don't know. I'm a big fan of Trent by itself, and then like I like Chuck Taylor from what I've seen. He's really good. Uh, Kentucky something. Ain't he from Kentucky? Uh, and they the interviewer asked them one question, and like they were like ask him, and it panned over to Orange Cassidy, who I know of from other um, AEW shows, basically, and I said, maybe y'all should comment something of his to watch, because I hear that he's hot right now, my friend told me I should, uh, react to something of Orange Cassidy, so if y'all want to see that, just comment that inside the comment section down below, uh, so then the lights go out, and I thought it was something with Orange Cassidy, but no, it was Sean Spears' entrance, which was weird, <laughs> so he came out with Tully Blanchard, I guess that's his manager, uh, Pac, or Pac was on commentary. I thought his name was Pac, but they keep calling him Pac for some reason. John Moxley came out. He was very intense. And him and Ty Dillinger, they started going at it really, really well. Like, it was a good match. I was watching it through the commercial. It was really, really good. Uh, I think Matt, John Moxley, or no, Sean Spears hit a suicide dive. And then, like... Somehow, Moxley just, like, ended up hitting one right after him. Like, I feel like I blinked and I missed how that happened, but I like that spot a lot. Because a suicide dive is really just, like, a put. Well, I guess it depends on how you do it. But I can definitely see that happening. So, it was, it was I liked it. And I really love the way that John Moxley does his finisher now. Like, I thought he would have changed it from that double arm DDT, but he kept it. I forgot what it's called now, but I, I, for some reason, when he hits in the AEW, it seems like it really hurts, and I really, really like it. So, John Moxley ended up winning with the Dirty Deeds, or whatever that move is called. It's definitely not called the Dirty Deeds. I gave the match 2.5 stars. I gave it 3 at first, but then I was like, you know what? I think 2.5 is st it's still a good match. Or maybe I should have gave it 3, because if some people think that maybe 3 is average, yeah, a 3-star match. It was It was fine. Uh, so then after the match, Kenny Omega comes out and he has a broom wrapped in gar a straw broom wrapped in barb barbed wire, Jesus Christ, and a baseball bat. I think it was a baseball bat wrapped in barbed wire. Moxley goes up the ramp. Kenny Omega throws him the baseball bat, and they're like standing about to go to war. And Pac or Pack attacks Kenny Omega from behind. Kenny Omega just looks like. Like, man, Kenny Omega, what in the world? Like, imagine if you weren't a fan, you didn't know nothing about anything. You just see Kenny Omega just always lose and get beat up. So then it's like Pac and Moxley, and Pac walks away, and Ambrose just looks down, or Moxley just looks down, and he walks away. So, like, Kenny Omega just comes up looking like such a doofus. I don't know. But it's it's a big story, but I just I disagree. Like right in the beginning, Kenny Omega, they should have been making it known that he is one of the best wrestlers in the world. Because honestly, if I'm 100% honest, I haven't seen that many matches of Kenny Omega, but the few that I've seen, I know he's the best in the one of the best in the world. And the fact that Chris Jericho, well, Chris Jericho is good, but the fact that Jack Swagger Isn't even Hangman Page? They're the one. Darby Allen. They're the ones inside the main event title picture, and Kenny Omega is just losing after lo even on, even Ambrose. Like, why aren't they being put? Like, I feel like they should be more with the title right now. I don't know. I don't know. That's just my opinion. So then we get to the main event, which was Hangman Page and Dustin. Rhodes versus Sammy Guevara and Chris Jericho. So I like this, how they had a promo in the beginning of the show, and then they actually had a match. So the heels worked over Heyman Page for a long, long time. And then Dustin got the hot tag, and he did like a dive from the top rope backwards, a crossbody. And like 
Everybody act like that was the best move in the world. <laughs> and uh, fans chanted, you still got it, which Dustin do still got it. He never really stopped having it. He, he, he can wrestle. He can go. So, Hangman Page did a moonsault to the outside. This is in the middle of Dustin's whole hot tag. Out of nowhere, Hangman Page did a moonsault to the outside. And then Jack Swagger, I mean, Jake Haggard clotheslined him, which the referee saw. <laughs> Sorry. The referee definitely saw him, but that he act like he didn't. Then we get to the in ring portion. I forgot what that move was called, but Dustin was still on his little hot tag thing, and he was, he he put his leg, uh, Chris Jericho's legs, in the corner like he was about to give him a low blow. I forgot what it's called, but the referee was acting like he didn't see what was going on, like he was getting Hangman Page out. Now, I was wondering what was taking Dustin so long to hit the move. Like, he's doing all his taunts and all this stuff, but it seemed like it was taking him forever. And the referee was like, it looks, it just looks silly at one point because nothing was happening. But then the commentator said that Hangman Page was actually holding him. And now we found out why, because Jack Swag, Jake Hager got into the ring and hit a clothesline on, and I, by the way, I'll, I'll say that for a second. He hit a clothesline, another clothesline on, who was it? On Dustin this time. And then Chris Jericho hits a Judas effect for the win. Three count. Uh, one thing I want to say about AEW is that I'm really liking this because I'm about to learn more about these wrestlers that I don't know. So, I, and I really, really, really am a fan of Sammy Guevara, I re, or Guevara, however you say it. I really like him a lot. I think he has a lot of potential, even though he loses. Well, he won this match. He won this match, actually. But the the one match that I seen him in, or two matches I seen him in, he lost both, which is fine. Like there's only two matches. I hate when people like somebody lose one match. They're always buried, buried. But then after that, the heels started ganging up on Dustin, and then Hangman got in the ring, so it was two on two. But then Swagger got or Hagger got in the ring. But then it was Hagger and Hangman who ended up brawling to the outside, like the, out of the arena. So then it was two on one again, and the lights go out, right? Was it the lights? And for a while, Swagger interferes and rain. Three on one attack. Page tries to help brawl out. Yeah, lights cut out. I'm thinking it's about to be a debut. Definitely a debut or Orange Cassidy. Lights come back on. It's Cody in a suit. Cody attacks them, the other two, and he ended up getting beat up too. So it was kind of weird. Then Jericho and Cody go at it, and LAX comes out. Well, actually, Cody hit a crossroad on Guevara, so Guevara was kind of out. Then it was like Cody and Jericho going at it. LAX come out, Santana and Ortiz, so now it's three on one. Then MJF comes out, and I know of him. I, I don't know the whole Cody and him storyline, though. Like, they best friends or whatever. I don't know nothing about that. But... MJF was, like, conflicted on who he wanted to fight or whatever. And then he ended up going after... He acted like he was about to go after Cody, but he ended up saving Cody. So I guess MJF is a face, but I feel like that's a bad idea, right? And I feel like the main event is, like... I'll get to that in a second. But MJF. So then, he gets a cold breaker. So I'm like, Jesus Christ, these people keep helping and getting beat up. Young Bucks come out. They start hitting super kicks. They going crazy. They going at it. Then... Jericho escapes. He lets them keep on fighting everybody. I'm thinking the show's over. He's leaving. Darby Allen comes out on the skateboard and takes out Jericho. I'm like, oh my God, this is so chaotic. But it's like a fun chaotic, and I kind of like it. I'm not going to lie. I really loved it. And uh, he hit him on the back with the skateboard and everything. And somehow, or maybe this wasn't somehow. Actually, yeah, I got this wrong. Jericho was cutting a promo. While he was outside the ring walking away. And that's when Darby Allen did that. And that's how the show ended. So, overall, I really liked the show tonight. I feel like everything was good. Uh, I just feel like the matches, uh, the well, the one match, Havoc versus Darby Allen. I feel like that match could have had more potential to be better. I really, really do. And then Ambrose or Moxley and Ty Dillinger. Well, they, they had a really good match. I should have gave it a three star. It was a good match. It was a good TV match. Uh, and the women's match was good. And, of course, the opener was good. So, really good show. I really liked it. But one thing about AEW that I will say, I hope they don't end the show like this every time. I feel like 
it's just a big team thing. Like, all these faces versus all these heels. I feel like the whole main event is just, like, Cody and his friends. Like, his, the good side. Like, I don't know. I don't know. I wish that the main event had more, like... like I feel like the main event are the people who are in the middle of the show. Ambrose, Omega, Pac. They should be the ones going for the title. Ambrose, or Moxley, Omega, Pac. Those three. Compare Moxley, o, um, Omega, and Pac. To, and I, I like Jericho, but Jericho, Hangman, and Cody. Maybe it's just my opinion. Let me know if y'all disagree. That's it for this video, y'all. Be sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe, and share this video on all forms of social media. Leave comments. Let's discuss this inside the comment section down below. I like to give this video or this show a thumbs up. I really liked it. Even though I said some negative stuff, I got to say the negative stuff to get to the positive stuff. This is a good show, y'all. So... Let's keep watching AEW and keep up with these. Well, I don't, I'm not going to do these every week, but sorry if this video is a little bit long, but catch you later.